Hey guys, my name's Justin and welcome to Hellsboro, where we care about the design behind designer luxury. And if you do too, oh my god, my eye twitched. Make sure to subscribe! So for today's video, I thought we would mix it up a little bit. So we're gonna do a bag remix today. When I say bag remix, what I mean is like, okay, hopefully you're alive for this. If not, you know, you're just along for the ride. Do you guys remember? I think it was in like the 2000s, they made something called Sprite Remix. So, you know, you have this beloved classic, but you know, at a certain point it's kind of like, okay, yeah, I get it, it's Sprite, lemon lime soda. But then they did the remix where they had like different fruity flavors added to Sprite. So there's like a tropical, I think there's one called like Aruba Jam. Of course, it didn't replace the original. The original is the one that's still here, but then these other ones were... I mean, I definitely loved a few of these flavors. I think there was only three, so that means I probably loved all of them. But that's kind of like what I'm going for here. So when I say bag remix, I mean, we're gonna talk about these classic handbags that are beloved and well-known. And then let's take a look at some of the versions that have been updated by the houses, whether it's a different color material, different finish, or something like that. But I don't know, I just think it'll be cool and fun and you know, like, so the first bag I wanted to talk about is from Louis Vuitton. This bag actually I, I don't think is in rotation anymore. You can definitely find it secondhand, and I know a lot of people had and or have this bag. It's the Papillon, the... I think that translates to butterfly? The Papillon is a cylindrical bag. It's literally just a cylinder with like long straps that you can wear on your shoulder, you can carry it by a hand or you know, whatever. And it is a classic bag shape. I don't know why they don't still make it, because I think it would be very popular right now. But recently, they've had an iteration of it. I think it's been out for a little while, but I just, I had to talk about it. And it's the Papillon Trunk. So for me, what I find so interesting about this remix of the original is that it's not that they did it specifically with a new material or a new color or just something like that, which I think you could find in a lot of ways. I would almost call those not bag remixes. The fact that they added those kind of like trunk elements that Louis Vuitton is so well known for and they made it seem like a more structured bag in that way. So you get that kind of like edging, you get some of the like that metal details. I mean the fact that they added a crossbody to this, love it. But for me it's really just about the fact that they took this already existing bag shape and they like completely like twisted it. I, I think it's really interesting. I do think it's kind of funny because like for me, the original Papillon, the reason it was called that I'm assuming is because it had the cylindrical shape, which was like the body of the butterfly. And then the two handles were long. So then those are like the wings, but then this just has a crossbody. So it's like, it's called the Papillon, but it's just a cylinder on a rope. Like that being said, I do still find this design very interesting. I love anytime Louis Vuitton kind of goes back into their heritage of like trunk making and like applies those details on bags where it works. So, good job. This next bag I want to talk about is from Loewe. The original bag is called the Flamenco and it's basically this clutch and it has what they call flamenco knots. So it has this kind of drawstring effect where you can like pull on it like the knots and then you can like tighten it up but really the closure is magnetic. One thing that's great about this is that even though it looks like a clutch it has a detachable chain or strap depending on what size you get. But then what I wanted to talk about today is like super cool and trendy just like Sprite Remix and it's the Puffy Flamenco. <laughs> this bag was actually debuted on the fall winter 22 runway that happened earlier this summer but Basically, they took the bag and then they just like pumped it up. They made it super puffy. I personally think it kind of looks like one of those, um, like those cartoon money sacks because it has that kind of like, not voluptuous, ugh. It has this very like full look, like a stuffed look. That's kind of the charming thing for me about this bag. It, it, it feels a little cartoony and it's, the Flamenco is this long-standing bag that's existed with Loewe for quite some time and then for them to kind of like make it cartoonish, add a bit of humor by making it puppy, I think is beautiful. So again, great job. Alright, the next bag I wanted to talk about is from Gucci. So Gucci has the Jackie 1961 and of course that's kind of like the origin of the bag, right? It came out then uh, the first lady Jackie Kennedy 
used it to like hide her face from paparazzis, blah, 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 all that great like history stuff. Cool. But then what I want to talk about is, it's still called The Jackie 1961, but this one, I don't know if it actually debuted in the fall winter 22 runway, but I love this grommeting effect that they've done on this bag and the fact that it's almost like overdone in grommets. It's almost more grommet than bag. And by them adding this many holes to this bag, it makes it almost kind of like a basket bag in a way, right? There's so much transparency and there's a lot of airiness that the contrast of like this negative space with like this heavy metal details, like this bag has to weigh a ton because of how much metal is on it. But then another thing I really love about this bag is that instead of doing it in like a, a coated canvas or just like a regular leather, they did it in a patent leather. And for me, it adds a little bit more of that like, it makes it a bit more punky, it adds some edge to it. So not only do you have like this hardware that's like covering the bag, you have a patent leather and then instead of like a normal strap, there's a chain that attaches to this bag. So then it's extra like, if you ask me what like the theme of this bag is, I would say like, oh, it's heavy metals, kind of like the whole play on words because you know, I like being clever sometimes. But yeah, with all these choices that they've made, I think it amounts to like a really interesting bag. So again, good job. The next bag I want to talk about is actually a pretty recent bag. I think it actually only came out of a few, a few years ago, actually. It's a Balenciaga Hourglass. I mean, if you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of all the different iterations that they do of the Hourglass. Like, I think in its purest form, just like with the regular calfskin, black and brass or silver hardware, you know, I think it's a, it's a great bag structurally. It has an interesting shape. I mean, I have, you know, whatever. But then also, you can see, like, I love it when they do these different types of, like, finishes materials. But the one I want to talk about specifically references the Fall Winter 22 runway of Balenciaga. <laughs> and Kim Kardashian wearing that, like, Balenciaga caution tape. I think it's super fantastic. So I actually talked about this bag in my, like, I'm so into this video. I'll link it in the corner. It looks like there's actually, like, a tape applique, like, wrapped around it. And something about it does something to my brain. Like, I desperately want to touch it so I can just, like, see with my hands how it is. <laughs> see me with the man. And I know this one is kind of like a cop-out because it's kind of like, it's the bag with the tape applique, but I think the fact that this, like, large-scale luxury house is doing a bag that's basically wrapped in duct tape, I think that's very brave, but also very cool and, uh, you know, a little silly, so. Good job. All right, and then the last bag I wanted to talk about is from Bottega Veneta. This bag has literally been everywhere, and I would actually say, in a way, one of the most popular versions of it was a bag remix, and that is the cassette bag. I know we've seen the cassette bag in so many different colors and materials, and of course we have the, the puffy cassette, and then even the puffy cassette with like the chain, all that other stuff. But I think the one version of this bag that I specifically wanted to talk about is the one that I think references kind of the new direction that the house is heading. So if you saw on the fall winter 22 runway of Bottega Veneta, they had a bag called the Calimero, which is like a bucket bag. And it has that intreccio woven leather kind of look to it. But then if you actually look at some of the versions of the bag, the woven leather actually has like a plissé kind of like, I don't know if you call it a structure or a technique done to it, but it's this kind of like pleated leather finish? I don't know. I don't know how to describe this because it's such a an interesting way like to structure a bag. You know, you, you, you pleat the leather and then you weave it. I think it's so beautiful and that's why I wanted to talk about this cassette. I think what's so interesting about this bag is you have the cassette which is a very rectangular kind of this like in a way understated bag. I mean at this point everyone kind of knows what this shape looks like but still it, it's a rectangle with woven leather but then for them to introduce this plissé kind of technique into the woven leather on the cassette. Not only does it add texture, it adds a little bit of physical weight, yes, but also kind of like a visual weight. It makes it look a little bit more hefty, it has a bit more body, and I think that's something that's really interesting to me. Because when you look at the puffy cassette, that obviously has a lot of body, it has that heft because of like the exaggerated intreccio like feature of it. But then doing it with this like textured leather by making these little tiny pleats in the leather, I think is even more interesting for me because 
I don't know, there's something about this tactile quality that it has that you can feel like the different directions of the pleats happening and you can see the directions of the pleats happening. I just know like if I personally own this bag, I would literally just be touching it the whole time. And I know that's not great for the leather. <laughs> but you know what? If it elicits a reaction like that from me, I have to say, well done. But to cap it off, the point I really want to make is like, of course we love these classic bags. And there's never going to be a situation where like these like redone, remixed bags are going to like overtake the classics and that that's going to replace it. I mean, maybe like the puffy is kind of, kind of overtook the cassette, but like in general, I don't think that ever really happens. But if we don't admire these bags that are more interesting, then I feel like it doesn't give the brand or the house the opportunity to kind of expand and maybe do a more interesting shape later on. So I think that the more interesting a classic shape you can do, the better, because then not only do you have that established silhouette, structure, whatever you want to call it, but you have something that either adds a tactile touch or something that helps you create more of a look for yourself. It gives it a bit more personality and it can help you express yourself in a really good way. Let me know if you guys agree or not. So many people love like the basic, classic, really like always gonna be there, materials, colors, shapes, whatever. But I always think there's more room for creativity. So do you have any of these bags, whether it's the classic or the remixed one? I love to hear about it. I love to hear from you guys, let me know. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you like this kind of content, that you do care about the design behind Designer Luxury. Until next time.